Welcome to the Needle Pub. This is Karen. There's been a, quite a bit of discussion this morning, or maybe it was yesterday and this morning, about um, basket weave, continental, and half cross stitching. Um, there was a person, and I'm sorry, I forgot forgot names, but someone was asking about doing basket weave on their full coverage pieces. Um, I'm going to demonstrate what true needlepoint basket weave is. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about continental stitch and half cross stitch. It's my opinion that, and again, only my opinion, and I'm not an expert, that true basket weave would be very difficult to do on a heaven and earth design primarily because of all the color changes. Um, I think the easiest and the way basket weave in needlepoint is probably used most often is to fill in a background. And for that, when you're stitching just one color, it is ideal. So what a true, let me get some of this fabric out of my way here. What a true um, basket weave stitch is, is you're actually working it on a diagonal and what you're going to do is go down in your fabric a bit away from where you want to stitch and then come up in your first stitch and you're going to do it basically as a half cross but then what you do is you move down one and come up and, and I'm doing this only with one thread so that you guys can see and see what it what it looks like and what I'm doing so it makes sense. And I'm going to complete that stitch and then I'm going to go up here on the other side of stitch number one and that will make stitch number three. Okay, so now I have three stitches in. Now I need to go back down the row so I'm going to, and it's always come up in your bottom left-hand corner, go down in your top right. So then we're going to move, and you're always working on a diagonal. So you can see why, again, my own personal opinion is that this is not a stitch that's well-suited for a chart that has a gazillion colors in it and especially a heavy confetti area, I don't know how you would keep track of where you are and all your color changes. Again, it's just my opinion that this particular stitch, which is a true basket weave stitch, is only really suitable for stitching with one color. So I'm going to go over here again. Stitching with one color and possibly like filling in a background or filling in an area that is predominant, is, is only one color within a needlepoint piece. Now, could you use it in a full coverage? Well, maybe if you have a big hunk of, of uh, non-confetti stitching with only one color, I could, could see that you could certainly do it. But this is not a stitch that I would recommend for your full coverage pieces like Heaven and Earth. Okay, so this, what I just did here, is a true basket weave. So I'll go upwards one more time. So I'm, the end stitch goes underneath the one you just completed and then you're actually going up that diagonal. Could you do it with two colors? Sure you could. Um, but once, I mean, once you get into your heavy confetti areas or maybe it's not even a heavy confetti area, it's just areas that it has a decent amount of color changes. I don't know how you would keep track. So that is a true needlepoint needle 
basket weave stitch. Now, what I'm going to show you next, and let me adjust my hoop a little bit, is how you could use, and this, I believe, would keep your um, fabric from warping. So I'm only going to use two colors with this today because it would take too long to demonstrate something with multiple colors, but you would, you'll get the idea. So what I would do is again, you know, start your piece, start your thread how you always start your thread. I'm going to just continue on with the length of thread I have here and say, we'll do three, three, three and one. Okay. So I'll do in a continental stitch. This is row number one. I will do three stitches. That's a little awkward for me here. Okay. Three stitches and park it three away. Fourth one. Oh, I'm not going to unthread my needles just because it would take too long. Um, and I'm going to do cheat starts here. <laughs> um, and then I would introduce my next color. Okay, so I'm still working stitch by stitch across my row. Okay, so even if this is five different colors or ten different colors, you would still do this the same way. Okay, so there we have three pink. And I'm going to skip three and put one here. So I'm going to say here, odd numbered rows are going to be a continental stitch. Okay, and I'll you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to do the three gray. And these are continental stitches, okay, because it's giving me the elongated stitch on the back. Okay, so that's three. And my next gray stitch is going to work, say, is going to be here. So I'm going to park it in the bottom left hand corner, like I always do. I'm going to do my last stitch in pink. And now remember, I want to stitch on the diagonal. So, so that I always come up in a clean hole, I'm going to come up in the bottom left-hand corner again. All right. I'm going to go down in the top right. So that's my half cross stitch. All right. I'm going to skip three. And my next one's going to be here. So I'm going to do these three gray ones. And these are done as a half stitch. Ah, fully unthreaded my needle. Fully, fully. Okay, here we go. These are done. So your even rows will be done as half stitches. Okay, so I'm going to skip my three. And now I'm going to do my three pink ones. Get it out of the way so you can see. I'm using 20 count fabric here with one strand of floss. And the angle I'm stitching at, it's a little bit hard for me to see, so bear with me. So that's two. Sometimes these holes get a little bit finicky to find. There we go. Ah! That's what happens when your little finger gets caught in the loop of the thread. Okay. And here's three. So I'm stitching on the diagonal. So one, two, three. I'm not going to need this on this row any time. So I'm going to park it here where I will be needing it. Okay. So we'll do the last three gray ones. And as I said, you can do this with any number of colors of thread because you're just doing like we did before or like I did on my 
late, my latest videos is one stitch at a time across the row. So now my next gray stitch, keeping it on the diagonal, will be here. And this time it's a third row, so it's a continental stitch. I will do three. Like I said, I'm just doing this as an easy pattern on a scrap of paper, uh, scrap of fabric to give you guys the idea. So I'm going to park it over here where I'll need it again. I'm going to do my three pink ones. And again, I'm only using one strand of floss so that you can clearly see what's going on. Okay, now we know there's going to be one pink one at the end, so we're going to put it over here at the, when we find the hole at the end, we're going to do our three gray ones. So I think working it this way is highly suitable for using, and to use the term generically, a tent stitch on the diagonal. If it, if I were to do it, this would be how I would do it. So then I'm going to park here underneath where the pink is going to go. I'm going to do my last pink one, and again this is at a as a continental stitch. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do my first, oh, these holes are hard to find, there we go, first pink one as a half cross and I'm going to park it here where I need it again. So like I said, it doesn't matter if it's two colors, five colors, the principle is the same. You do your stitches, park it where the next occurrence is and keep working across and you can work it on the diagonal. Okay, so that is what I would do. So row, the first row would be a continental. The second row would be a half cross. The third row, a continental. The fourth row, a half cross. Now, your question's going to be, what if I have to park my thread down here? Okay. If you're using an electronic, like if you're doing your on your iPad it's or your tablet, it's a little hard to mark. If you're doing it you grow up working off of paper, you could over in your margin denote your every other row so you have a quick glance. Or you could make a cheat sheet that matches up with your rows, lay it here and say, Okay, this is a continental row, this is a half cross stitch row or you can just count so say okay I finished this gray and I need it in my next block say three stitches over and three stitches down okay we know row number one is continental row number two is half cross so row number three is cont continental. What we, what I would do, and how can I say, no matter which um, direction we're going in, we're always parking in the lower left-hand corner. So that's really not that big a deal, whether I have to park it in the left, lower left or the upper right, really doesn't come into play you're always going to park it in the lower left. We're going to know that the third row is going to be continental stitches, okay, which is going to give you the long carry on the back, whereas your even rows are going to be half cross stitches where you're going to get that up and down look on the back. So let's take a look at my back and see if I can get you in focus for that, I might have to move the camera just a wee bit. OK, 
Okay. Have to bring this closer to you because there we go. Focus. Okay. It's kind of a little bit messier than usual just because of the way I did it. But here I did a sample. Again, sorry to be making you a little ill here. Here's a sample of what your back would look like. Say it's all one color. You have a row of continental, a row of half stitch, a row of continental, a row of half stitches, and a row of continental. That should prevent your fabric from warping. Okay, let me get you back here. There we go. That should prevent your fabric from warping because you alternated how you do it. If you would do it all the continental, which is the long stitch on the back, my guess is your fabric is gonna warp just the way it is. If you do it all half cross, you have less likelihood of that happening. But if you're gonna wanna do tent stitching, I would recommend you do the alternating rows, especially if you're doing how I do is completing one row and one and then zigzagging back and forth with my rows. Personally, that's how I would do it. And then I would be alternating continental stitch with half cross stitch, which should prevent your fabric from getting out to kilter and warping like, I mean, I've seen needlepoint pieces, for example, that have really, really, really warped and all the stretching in the world, it was difficult to get them back into the correct shape because they were so, so out of shape. Um, you know, I don't do needlepoint, so I don't have a lot of experience with that. Um, that being said, the stitches that are used in needlepoint can also be used in your counted thread work. So they are interchangeable between the two. So that's, you know, one of the reasons. And people like tent stitching, for example, whether it be half cross or continental. I really don't know anyone that uses a true basket weave in their cross stitch. Um, but a lot of people like to do the tent stitching because your piece gets done a lot faster. It goes a lot faster than, you know, what those of us who do full crosses do. So I hope this helps people. I hope you get, you understand the difference now between a true basket weave stitch and then what I would recommend and what I would do if I was going to tent stitch is alternating continental and half cross on my rows. So hopefully you find that helpful. And I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I will see you next time.